Well, good morning and welcome to Over the Vest Nurseries. It's a beautiful day in midsummer, and as you see, we're getting ready to send out lots of really nice plants to our partnering garden centres. Those are the ones that are located right throughout our region, the mid Atlantic and northeastern states of the US. As you see, lots of really very colourful plants, ones that are easy to grow in this region and provide lots of colour. And if you're talking about colour in the garden, then of course one of the probably most exciting colour ranges that we're going to be able to have in perennials in this region are these, the coneflowers, or known botanically as Echinacea. And really what's exciting is that over the last 20 years or so, there's been literally an explosion of different types, all developed from native species. They come now in short, compact growing forms like this Kismet Intense Orange. And bicolor varieties like this one here that's called Green Twister. And then taller growing ones like Magnus. Different colors as you see so you're able to pick the ones that blend and suit your taste and also some beautiful doubles as you see here this is fresco apricot and then take a look at these magnificent bicolored ones here this is fine feathered parrot lots to choose from and when you go out to our partnering garden centers look out because you're likely to see some of these there on their benches but today I want to take you and show you an exciting new series that we've been looking at over the last couple of years. It's called the Sunseeker series. And this is what I'm talking about. There are several varieties in the series. For instance, this one here, which is one called Miniola. As you see, this is really quite impressive. As you see, first of all, it's a very nice bright orange color. But when you look closely at the flowers here, you'll see that they're made up of multiple little ray florets. That's what these things are here. We call them commonly petals, I suppose. And this particular one looks like one of those old Elizabethan ruffs that they used to wear and as you see it's a free flowering variety getting to about 18 inches by about 18 inches wide and putting on a really very nice show with this bright orange color then there's this one which is called Sunseeker Rainbow. And as you see, it's got a little bit of an orangey shade to it, but much more predominantly pink. And again, these big, comparatively large size double flowers with lots of petals on them. This one will get a little taller. This one will get up to just under two foot tall, but as you see, puts on an impressive sight. And then here's another variety that we're trialing. Not sure if this one will actually be introduced or not. It's called Magenta. As you see, it also has these very strongly double flowers here that are produced in profusion. It looks like it's going to be a little taller, I would say probably two, maybe two and a half foot high, but well branched and nice and sturdy, and again has these impressive flowers on them. Now, that's just a few. There are more colors in them, but if you had to say to me, what's your favorite, David? I'll tell you, this little one here is definitely the one that catches my eye every time I walk by here when I'm performing our evaluations. And this variety is called Sweet Fuchsia. And just look, this is probably the most compact out of the whole series. And there's white ones and yellow ones and other colors too coming. So stay tuned because we're almost certainly going to be trialing and testing more of these and probably getting more into our partnering garden centers as time unfolds. But I wanted you to see this one in particular because as you see, it really has a very appealing kind of 
purpley pink color on stocky stems the plant only grows about a foot or maybe at its most 15 inches or so high by about the same wide and you can tell by these little plants here how free flowering this variety is you can also tell by the fact that there's only a few left here that this has been popular with our customers and that's what I would say is that when you're out and about looking around at and visiting our garden centers take a look because they have been picking up some of these new varieties and as time goes on I suspect many of them will be stocking more of them too but assuming that you get the plants and you have them growing in your garden and as you see some of these have been in flower now for a couple of weeks the flowers are beginning just to go over and lose some of their shine and if that's happening in your garden with a pair of pruners it's very easy just to go in and snip out the old flower stems here just down at the base of a leaf stem and that will freshen up the plants give them new impetus from in the base of the crown that'll stimulate new fresh buds that are going to be breaking again from the crown and that will keep them flowering from early July all the way through into September and perhaps even the frosts now this is called deadheading and just as that name describes what we're doing is taking out the old heads as they're going over so with a pair of sharp pruners or perhaps even scissors as you see this plant here has grown out from the base of the crown if you can see this here's the growth coming out there was the flower spike that's come up and here are some buds breaking from deeper inside the crown and so with a pair of pruners or scissors you can get in and just snip out the old flower head like that and here's another one just to let you see here's the same thing old flowers just starting to discolor now and if I follow this down into the middle of the crown you'll see that there where there's a leaf joint is where I'm snipping that out and now look at the plant it's much fresher I'm going to leave these two on for about another week or so but then they will also be snipped out and that will then keep the plant looking nice and fresh and look what's happening here looking at the base of this crown here you see there's one two three four flower buds already beginning to break out from the crown and as these are snipped out then these are going to take over and that's what's going to continue the show through the rest of the summer time so that's what you do when there's only a few flowers beginning to go over but let me go back to this variety here again miniola and show you what to do when you have a plant like this that is predominantly finished flowering or almost coming to an end and with this one it's the same principle really as you see the plant is growing nice and strongly and in fact here you'll see that it's making new flower bud too but these are looking a little bit now disraggled so what you do is basically the same thing is that you go in with a pair of pruners and then just go back to a leaf bud and snip off these old flowers here gradually just taking them back so that then we're going to encourage the plant to stimulate new growth from inside the crown growth that then is going to grow out in the following weeks and then produce a new crop of flowers to keep it going because if you see if you didn't do that these are probably going to put their energy into making seed now that's good because it's going to be encouraging little finches to come into your garden but by going through and trimming off these shoots now at this time the old flower heads as you see we've now encouraged or will be encouraging new growth that's then going to sprout out come from the crown here that's going to then lead to even more flowers so that eventually this in probably about three or four weeks time will be a mass of beautiful bright orange flowers again so that's what you can do with your cone flowers to keep them young and vigorous and free flowering producing flowers all the way through to the end of the season 
If you want to provide some food for your little finches and small birds, you can always do that towards the back end of the season. Allow the last crops of flowers to set seed and in no time at all you'll be surprised how many of those gorgeous little birds are coming to pack on the seed heads too. Now that's just a few of the double flowered ones. Within the series there's also some short, compact, very free flowering single varieties too that have also caught our eyes. And that's this one which is called Sunseeker Red which as you see when the flowers emerge first they have a deep pink or light red color and also dark red stems too. But the thing about this variety is that it gets a little taller, it's probably going to be touching about two foot, but as you see from the amount of flowers that are carried here on these young plants, that it is a very free flowering selection and therefore likely to put on a terrific show if that's the sort of color and size that you're looking for. But then finally let me show you the last plant that we have in the trial. And that's this variety which is called Tequila Sunrise. Talk about an eye catcher. When you look at this you'll see that it has multiple colors going on on the same plant. Comes out predominantly bicolor, but you'll see that the young growth starts out first of all with this yellow and orange bicolor effect. And then as the flowers age and pass through, you'll see that they start to take on more of an amber shade. So when you look at the plants, you get this nice assortment of colors going through. A plant that will get to about 16 inches or so high by probably about the same wide. It's also a nice bushy, well-branched, free-flowering variety that will set your beds and borders alive with lots of exciting summer colour. And before I get too far ahead of myself, let me stress that these are still very much in the trialing and testing stage. We've been working with them now a couple of years and we've certainly been impressed with their performance, with their reliability and also hardiness levels and so on. But we still have more testing and trialing and obviously we'll be picking the ones that are going to be the best performers and the ones that we think are probably going to be best suited for this region, that's the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states of the US. So stay tuned because I think I can confidently tell you that there's going to be more sun seekers turning up in your local garden center. What's interesting about the background story of these plants is that they have been developed by one of Europe's up-and-coming young plant hybridizers, a man called Glenn Spill. He's working at Goatee's All Plant in the Netherlands and I think really he's done some very, very impressive work in bringing all of these lovely selections to this stage. So stay tuned because there's more coming I'm sure and I hope that you'll be able to enjoy at least some of these in your garden. This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's good for our environment too.